First speaker is Ray Nadler Olenek to speak on water fluoridation. Uh, good afternoon, Mary Leffingwell and council members. As everyone who reads The Statesman, hears NPR or watches TV news knows by now, <clears throat> last week the Centers for Disease Control abruptly lowered its recommendation for so-called optimal water fluoridation <clears throat> from a range of 0.7 to 1.25 parts per million to an exact 0.7 parts per million. Overnight, the lower limit became the upper limit, slashed by almost half. CDC's stated reason was to cut down on dental fluorosis, or stained teeth, which today afflicts over 40% of U.S. youngsters aged 12 to 15. They've known about it for years. Why pick this particular moment to change? Who knows? What's important is their two monumental concessions. After a half century of denial and stonewalling, the agency has finally admitted that fluorosis, previously dismissed as a minor, strictly cosmetic issue, is a huge problem which needs to be addressed. They also recognize for the first time the cumulative <laughs> overload of fluoride people are getting from other sources like food and toothpaste. What they failed to acknowledge was that fluoride harms the entire body, not just teeth. Their new optimal standard is as arbitrary as the old one, with no way to know or control individual dosage. The, uh, the appropriate standard for added fluoride is zero. CDC's surprising announcement comes on the heels of equally explosive news out of China, namely the release of a report linking fluoride ingestion with lowered intelligence. It's actually the 24th such report. What makes this one key is it directly connects reduced IQs to blood serum fluoride levels that result from drinking water fluoridated at concentrations far below the four parts per million the EPA calls safe. Fluoride acts like lead in the body, crossing the blood-brain barrier in utero and in small children. No one denies that lead is bad for children. This chart from a standard chemical reference book shows the relative toxicities of lead, fluoride, and arsenic. You can see fluoride is more toxic than lead, yet the EPA allows vastly more of it in our water. Go figure. There's a change in the wind regarding fluoridation policy. Austin can and should be in the vanguard of abandoning that counterproductive practice. I urge you to open your minds to that possibility. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Questions? Most of us grew up with the idea that more fluoride meant better teeth. And health officials believe that putting fluoride in water is one of the top 10 public health accomplishments of the last century. But new studies now say that too much fluoride is damaging the teeth of more than one in three teens. So for the first time in nearly 50 years, the federal government is reversing course and recommending less fluoride in water. Here's Ron Claiborne. Ever since the 1940s, fluoride has been artificially added to drinking water to help fight tooth decay. It's Isn't been credited beautiful? with reducing cavities by up to 50%. But even then, there were critics who complained about injecting a chemical into drinking water, a view satirized in the 1960s movie Dr. Strangelove. Do you realize that fluoridation is the most monstrously conceived and dangerous communist plot we have ever had to face? But today, the federal government called for reducing the amount of fluoride in water to protect children from a tooth disease called fluorosis, which stains and even erodes teeth. It affects as many as a third of American children. Making this adjustment now will uh, promote public health, uh, improve oral health, and reduce rates of fluorosis. There's a twinkle in your eye when there's fluoride for their teeth. For years, fluoride has been added to toothpaste and is in other products we eat and drink. The government says Americans are now ingesting too much fluoride. Its new recommendation... No more than 0.7 milligrams of fluoride for every liter of drinking water, down from 1.2 milligrams a liter. Cities such as New York, Chicago, and Minneapolis, and many others whose water has higher amounts of fluoride would have to reduce them to meet the new target. Dr. Griffin Cole of Austin, Texas, says he has treated some severe cases of fluorosis in children. The teeth become brittle, become weak, and you have to treat them with either crowns or new facings, and it can be very costly. Critics say fluoride can cause greater damage than just brittle teeth. 
Even the National Research Council, whose 2006 report was cited today by the EPA, linked it to bone damage and increased risk of fractures. The government says there's no evidence fluoride causes serious illness. The only concern for now, the potentially serious damage to children's teeth. And the president of the American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry says parents need to be especially vigilant about all the ways that children can ingest fluoride, including swallowing toothpaste. His advice, give them only a pea-sized amount on the toothbrush to make it much less likely they will end up eating a big glob of toothpaste <laughs> with fluoride on it. So don't overdo that rinse either. I don't like overdo the, taste the rinse. Of that. Okay, Ron, thanks.